This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. This show is brought to you by Pet King Brands, the makers of Zymox and Oratine. It's All Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, sure, the pet industry is full of adorable cats and dogs and other companion animals. But to succeed, you must need business savvy. And you definitely, definitely need to network. Our special guest today is all about bringing people and companies together to make this planet truly pet welcoming. So let's give pause and applause to the founder and president of the American Pet Professionals, the remarkable Nancy Hassel. Welcome to the show, Nancy. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Arden. I'm so happy to be here. All right. Hey, pet pals. We're going to find out all the great things that Nancy does for pets and their people and the pet industry after we pay for the show by taking a commercial break. So, you know the drill. Sit, stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Pause up, pet pals. Arden Moore here to talk about the importance of keeping your cats and dogs hydrated. Yes, clean water is great, but not all pets, especially cats, will lap up enough water every day from the bowl. Or maybe your dog is thirsty after a long walk. That's why I'm a big fan of two new isotonic drinks called Kitty Raid and Doggy Raid. And there is a great meal topper to enhance kibble called Yummy Raid. They all contain electrolytes and amino acids plus prebiotics. And they're all veterinary approved. Nice, right? Now, my furry Brady Bunch love them. Find out where you can get your paws on these healthy, hydrating drinks and gravy-like meal topper by visiting DoggyRaid.com. That's D-O-G-G-Y-R-A-D-E dot com. Drink up, pets. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I am so excited to have this mega talent on our show. She is as comfortable in front of a camera as behind one. She's as comfortable leading a big event as she is working behind the scenes. And she is, of course, Nancy Hassel, president and founder of the American Pet Professionals. Nancy, that's a mouthful. And, and you got a long website too, AmericanPetProfessionals.com. <laughs> Don't forget Ooh. the S. <laughs> oh, yeah, professionals.com. <laughs> Boom. Um, but but you wanted the long URL, right? Because yes. it matters. Brand identity, right? Absolutely. And you're at the top of the list with that name, right? Alphabetical order. Oh, there you go. There Fun you go. In fact, I had a different name when I was rebranding because we used to be Long Island Pet Professionals because okay. I am from Long Island and we were hyper local when we first started. And when I was rebranding, I was looking at a different name. And then when I was going through the list, I was like, oh, that's kind of silly. That puts me all the way at the bottom of the list. <laughs> and so we went with American Pet Professionals because, you know, that's what we are. So yeah, and you've been around since 2009, correct? Yes. Yep. A long time now. As a side note, an organization that probably is good that they didn't use their name as their URL is the American Association of Feline Practitioners. I, I would have to take a break halfway through typing that. That's so, so true. Yeah. APP.com was not available. So 
Well, I'm glad it's American Pet Professionals, and yeah. I'm glad that that association for the cat veterinarians, they changed their URL as simply catvets.com. Oh, I love that. That's perfect. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Easy. So people are going, okay, what the heck is American Pet Professionals? Take it away, Nancy. Yeah. So I've been asked that question for many, many years, usually by people outside of the industry that don't understand what a pet professional is. They are paying attention now, right? With our oh, massive, yes. massive We're talking industry. billion dollar, yeah, multi, yeah. multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. Yep. But American Pet Professionals in a nutshell is we are a business networking, education, and multimedia organization for the pet industry. So we accept all pet professionals, even those aspiring to come into the pet industry. So we don't have a specific niche for like dog trainers, because there's wonderful dog training organizations. We're not specific to pet product manufacturers, because there's wonderful organizations like that. And we're a team player with all the organizations out there, cheerleader myself for the pet industry. So if you are an aspiring pet professional, if you want to network and really work with all kinds of pet professionals, our content and everything that we do is overarching. We do sometimes dive into specific areas of the pet industry. We have a lot of different members from pet sitting, dog training, manufacturers, retail, grooming, daycare, you name it. And the EIEIO. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's crazy, Arden. When I started having categories for members back in the day, I think we were at like 25 to 30 and now we're over 70 categories. Wow. And the coolest thing is that somebody will come and say, I want to join be part of your organization, but there's no category. And I'm like, okay, what's your business? And they have a completely new niche or came up with something really. So I love that. I get super excited. I'm like, Hey, we'll make the niche in the category for you. You're a trailblazer. So, um, yes, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. All right. How many members would you say you have now? About? We have close to 500 members. So that is, we have about 200 businesses and 500 members. So a lot of the members have multiple people in their business as members. And I humbly is one of them, um, me, myself, and I. Yep. And I do pay attention on your Facebook page, and I'm hoping to be uh, more active. I was doing a show, Meowy Hour, for two years. Yes. And uh, it was always seeming to be the time you were having a meeting. I'm like, dang yeah. it, I can't do it because <laughs> this is live on Facebook and I got to do it. Yep. So I do respect what you're doing. So why do we need help? And how do you wrangle? <laughs> get all these people big and small to feel like uh, they've got some help at the American Pet Professionals Group. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of started with, for a few reasons, right? And how we wrangle people is, we'll, I'll get to that. But I started it because in the beginning, I didn't like competition among pet professionals, right? Yeah. Before I started this organization, I started teaching a responsible dog ownership class. I have experience working in, you know, pet retail and doing pet sitting and all the things, right? And reading Pet Age magazine for probably 25 to 30 years, right? Like for a long time, even before I was in the industry. And even locally here, the competition among different pet business owners really kind of irked me because I thought if we work together, we'll build our community, we'll help pets, we'll help the pet parents, and you'll grow your business and you'll yeah. help your nonprofit and you'll help the animal rescues. Like, why are you having competition? There is enough to go around, especially in the New York area where I am. I mean, amen, a sister. I mean, I agree with you. When I entered the world of pet first aid, I'm like, why does it have to be competitive when only two to 3% of the total pet parent market even takes a class? So I am on team Nancy, collaborate, <laughs> don't compete. Absolutely. And you know, like sometimes I would hear from, and this is not to single out an area of an industry, it just happened to be a, a specific example from a dog trainer that didn't really like another dog trainer and was upset. And I was like, have you ever met that person? No. And I'm like, I know you and I know him and you guys have so many similarities. It's crazy. I said, Please I bet tell if you me they didn't get married after you introduced them. <laughs> no, that would be funny. <laughs> no, but you know, it was just kind of like, why don't you go and have some coffee or reach out to them? And, you know, like that other person has helped a lot of businesses. So it kind of started with that. The other reason that, you know, I wanted to do all pet professionals from all areas of the industry is because I personally could not go to the conferences and the trade shows because I didn't qualify at the time. And I understand 100% why, you know, they have qualifications for certain trade shows, like you need to be a buyer, or you have to have a certain area of your business being a pet product. I totally get that because I've hosted my own shows like that. But I was like, I want to be more involved and get everybody involved and start hosting events. 
I'll tell you a really quick backstory. When I started, and I and I love to say this to people. I love you, by the way. <laughs> just I just love you. Keep going. Thank you. You're so sweet. I love you too. <laughs> In 2008, I went to a networking event for all entrepreneurs, right? From all backgrounds, not really pet at all. And uh, the lady that I knew was running it and it was like an hour and a half from my house. And I was speaking on how to get your business in the news because I did PR for a long time, right? And I happened to be sitting next to the only other pet professional in the entire room of like 60 people. And she was a new veterinarian who had just come back to Long Island from uh, she went to college and then worked and was coming back. And she said to me, are there any pet professional organizations on Long Island? And I said, well, there's a veterinary organization that would probably be good for you. And after she said that, I just sat there and I was like, she's the third person that has asked me that in the last two weeks, because I was already doing stuff in the pet industry, pet sitting, responsible dog ownership, you know, all the things. And I just thought that's really crazy that three people have asked me that in two weeks. And I sat there and I looked around at the networking event and I'm like, I could host one of these probably. (laughs) Yeah, And we were, yeah, we were also in the middle of the recession, right? So it was hard in that situation. So I I said, hmm, I'm going to throw something together and see what happens. I'm just going to put it out there. And so we had our very first networking event in person in February of 2009. It was a random Tuesday night, cold in the middle of Long Island. You sound like the opening pages of a, <laughs> of a novel. Okay, it was a cold. <laughs> it was. And I bartered with the restaurant owner because, you know, nobody was going out to restaurants at the time because it was the recession. And so I said, if you give me a few free trays of like food, (laughs) salad and pasta, I will bring like 60 people to you and you'll have a great bar tab. Meanwhile, I had no idea if anybody was going to come. And he was like, okay. And so I put a press release out. We ended up having people from all over Long Island, three different states and every borough of New York City come. And people that came to that first event are still members today. So I was like, wow, there's a need for this. And at the end of that first networking event, people were like, when's the next one? I was like, next month. I had no idea. (laughs) How was the bar tab? It was good. We stayed for quite a while. So (laughs) the guy was happy. We ended up having our 10th anniversary party there. 10th or 8th. I think it was our 8th at that. Uh, location again. And this time I paid for the food and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, I think if people are listening, uh, because there are a lot of folks that have tuned into our show that are from major, major pet companies, yeah. there's solo entrepreneurs yep. tuning in and things like that. Uh, you, I guess you're a great example of someone that's feeling this need and not just talking about it, but feeling it. And I am wanting to salute you because uh, you also were named 2018 Women of Influence by Pet Age magazine. You got that award, the yeah. magazine you were reading well before you got <laughs> plunged in. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, I want you, if you can, address some tips for the solo person and a person that's in a big corporation that maybe can help them. So we're talking with Nancy Hassel. She is the founder of the American Pet Professionals Group, and we're going to learn more, but we got to pay for the show. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hey, pet pals. Arden Moore here. Itch, scratch, rub, chew, Repeat. Does that sound like what's happening to your pet? Help is here. Zymox skin and ear care products can help calm and soothe your pet's angry skin or red infected ears. For over 20 years, Zymox products have been helping pets find relief for these conditions. For that itchy pet, Zymox shampoo and leave-on conditioner combines a special blend of ingredients that moisturize, hydrate, and provide soothing relief. For those hard-to-treat areas like body folds or the paws, easy-to-use Zymox topical cream and spray are great options. And for those nasty ears, Zymox ear solution is amazing. And you don't even have to pre-clean the painful ear. No pre-cleaning? Hooray! All Zymox skin and ear products get their effectiveness from enzymes. Zymox contains no antibiotics and no petroleum byproducts, just the soothing power of enzymes. Zymox can be found at your veterinary clinic, most specialty stores for pets, and online. And you can save 20% off 
any Zymox or Oratine products on Zymox.com. Just enter the code ARDEN20 at checkout. That's ARDEN20. Visit Zymox.com. That's Z-Y-M-O-X.com. Pause up. Tever Pet knows there's a lot in your life that you worry about. We want to make sure your pet's flea and tick protection isn't one of them. Tever Pet offers vet quality flea and tick protection that has the same active ingredients as leading brands like Canine Advantix 2 and Frontline Plus, but that cost much less, which means you can give your pet total flea protection worry free. Tever Pet, helping you and your pet live your best life. Online at TevraPet.com. That's T E V R A Pet.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Com. Hi, this is Joyce DeWitt. You may remember me from Three's Company, inviting you to have the good sense to tune in to the adorable, amazing Arden Moore on Behave on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Behave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OB Hay Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I am learning a lot from my friend Nancy Hassel, president and founder of the American Pet Professionals Group. And uh, let's plunge in. So there are a lot of folks that have an idea. You know, think of all the famous people that started major companies in their garage or basements, yep. right? And it and it crosses not just pets but other industries. Yep. So for the person, the solo entrepreneur in the pet field. What's the benefits of being part of APP and what kind of tip can you give them to keep them going? Yeah, absolutely. I could give a ton of tips. We'd be here all day, but <laughs> it's only a half hour show. I know, Nancy. I know. I have to rein myself in. I get too excited about it. Yeah. So some of the benefits definitely is that, you know, we're a very collaborative community. We are there to build each other up and help each other. So we host different networking events. Um, we hosted them on Zoom before the pandemic. But we do two events, networking a month, and we just had a themed networking event the other night. We also have an educational webinar, whether it's me or we bring in a ton of different expert speakers. And then we have a Pet Biz Idea Think Tank where we get together and we mastermind and we really, really help. And those to me are one of the highlights of the month because it's just incredible what everybody brings to the situation, to the event and helps each other. Last month, we had a a solopreneur who was thinking about ending her business because she just is a new mom and all the things going on. And she wasn't really sure how to move forward. And somebody in our mastermind was like, Hey, I could help you with all of that. And really? was like the match. And that's happened, you know, so many times. I know I get so excited over it. And that's you what are I've a seen. pet matchmaker. <laughs> I try. So it was just, it's really great. So some tips for a solopreneur that's just starting out. I don't think it matters what you're going to do in the pet industry. One of the things I would say is do your research in the field that you're going to open a business, right? Because a lot of times you might have a great idea for a business model or for a product and not discounting it at all, but you need to do your due diligence and do your research because there might be a product out there similar to yours, but maybe yours is better. Maybe yours is, you know, you have different features to it. When it comes to other businesses, again, do your research, start really digging in. Is it needed in your community? You know, put together a group of people that can give you feedback on whether it's needed. Yes, they want to do something like that. And, you know, I just think doing research is the very first step to do. Okay, let's go to the big corporation. And there's a lot of big dogs in the pet industry. Uh, And you're part of that group. Well, and <laughs> you're trying to advance and you're you're trying to show that you you can contribute and not be swallowed up in a number, you know, being part of a big number. Is there any tip you can give somebody that's in a big corporation that is trying to get noticed and trying to keep growing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I haven't worked corporate in many, many years. So I would just say, be who you are, show what your expertise and skills are. And bring your ideas and information to the table. I feel like a lot of times people are a little insecure about like, hey, I have this great idea for the corporation, even if it's not your area of the, like you're going to be the person to execute it, but it might be something that you're going to bring to fruition for the business. 
And I think helping bringing those ideas to the forefront for your big business is really going to help. And so all the corporations out there, I know there's many in the pet industry that have a very good team mentality within there and people stay for years and years and you see that. Yeah. Um, And I love that. So to the people that are managing and the bosses and the CEOs, listen to your people, right? Listen to what's going on. Even if it's something that maybe you guys have tried in the past and you know doesn't work, you could still listen to them because you just never know what's going to come. I think listening and being quiet and present to what your people behind you, the people under you, the people that are working for you are going to bring to the table may change the course of your business. So I think listening and and accepting some uh, new ideas from people that are coming up in your business is a really good thing. I love that. That's a really good tip. So what's something coming up with American pet professionals that we need to keep on our radar? Yeah, well, total shameless plug. We have an open enrollment for memberships. We open for a couple of weeks and then we stay closed and we do that so we can really focus on our members and not promoting. But we always have things going on. I often do events for non-members just to, you know, help people that are up and coming in the pet industry. Sometimes we'll have open office hours. Sometimes we'll do pet industry 101. Yes, and we'll I like have that those one. things. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we have a lot of stuff coming up. And I know you get squeeze out more seconds out of a day than most people, but you also need to play. Yeah. Um, and I think you got a pretty good teammate. Can you tell everybody about that social media sensation, the cutie pie Cody? Oh, yeah. So I have Cody, my pit bull, who I adopted in 2015. He's my second pit bull. And he is more talkative than me, believe it or not. (laughs) And he likes to make noise. He's super friendly. And he's growing on TikTok. If you guys want to follow him, Cody the Blue Nose. So I like that. Yeah, we have a lot of fun with doing videos with him on TikTok because he's very animated. And doesn't he have like 5,000 followers on TikTok or something? He's got 11,000 now on TikTok. I think 5,000 on Facebook. Instagram has always been a struggle for him. I don't know why, but I don't worry about it. But we have fun. And we also provide education for pet parents with his page, kind of like what you do, Artem, with your pets, right? So we'll talk about different pet products on his page and just some training every once in a while will creep in and like what not to do, what you should do, look out for. But most of it is just really fun. And I also take him to dog friendly places. Yes. So we have a series on his TikTok page of dog friendly places. I think we're at like 20 or 22. So my background was in video. So <laughs> that, well, TV producer, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, yep. people are going to, how did she get here? What did you do prior <laughs> to being founder of the American Pet Professionals? Yeah. So I did the route that most of us did. Went to school, got a job, right? And I went for communications and television production and worked in TV for about 10 years uh, for different companies and stuff like that. Loved every aspect of the creative part of video production. The long days, maybe not so much. (laughs) Shoot days could be 16 hours, you know? 6 a.m. call times aren't always the most fun, but really working with clients and stuff like that. And then I had worked in public relations for many, many years after that. But I also always had one foot in the pet industry, always doing something, learning something, reading something. My old Doberman Shanna was really the caveat into definitely wanting to work in the pet industry back in the early 90s, but I did not know where or what I wanted to do. So I did a lot of research. I thought I wanted to open a doggy daycare and I did a ton of research and I was like, yeah, probably no, not. No. <laughs> I give Check, anybody please. that runs doggy daycare so much credit. It's yeah. so much work. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I train a lot of uh, uh, staff and doggy daycares and pet yep. first aid and uh, the turnover there is pretty big. And if you do get a good, you know, assistant or senior member, you know, I have learned the owners are like, we need to treat these people very, very well to keep them retain, 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 because it's all about retraining, 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 right? Yeah, absolutely. So I am bouncing a bit, apologize. But I also want to say so you hang out with Cody, but (laughs) aren't you like into kayaking pretty big? (laughs) I do love kayaking. I've been kayaking for 25 years. I wow. um, grew up boating. You know, my dad had a couple of boats and we grew up on the Great South Bay on Long Island, boating, fishing, going to the beach, all the fun things. So as much as I love all the different seasons, once summer comes, I'm drawn to the water no matter where I am. If I'm in the middle of the country and there's a lake, I'm drawn to the water. So Are I you enjoy sure you're it. not part, you know, uh, 
Portuguese water dog? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, so, and Cody has not kayaked with me. He does have a life vest that I thought he would, but he likes to swim and he's oh. 72 pounds. So I don't think bringing him on the kayak if he jumps in would be a good thing. So no, but that's okay. Know separate... your dog. Know your dog. Yeah. yeah. Ab- yes. Know your dog. I love that. My yep. um, last two dogs, Chipper and Cleo, Chip Ahoy and Salty Dog, actually were surfers in California. Oh, that's awesome. And they surf yeah. better than I do. But my new dog, Kona, is like, no, thank you. No, yeah. thank you. I don't even want to go in a doggy pool. But when you are on that water and you're unplugged, Yep. Is there any tip you can give people on the importance of having a little me time or oh time gosh. away from PET? Yeah, listen, I think it's so important to have other hobbies or outreaches, um, you know, outside of the pet industry. You know, a lot of my unplugging is walking my dog, right? We have a daily non-negotiable. He walks like we walk one to three miles all year long, even in 10 degree weather, he might have two sets of clothes on as a short hair dog, but we go in the snow, everything. And I do definitely unplug in there, but being on the water, I just feel like we are work so hard in the pet industry. And I have been there where it's, you know, 12 hour days on every day. And, you know, every weekend going to an event, flying, jumping in my car, having a booth, going and speaking, like all the wonderful things that we get to do in the pet industry. But if you don't take that downtime and really unplug, you're going to burn out and you're not going to be good for anybody, whether you have your own, you know, solopreneur business, whether you have multiple stores, whether you're working corporate, you really have to make sure that you're fully unplugging. It's really important. I totally agree. I I walk my dogs and play with my cats and actually I'm into the wordle now. And oh. it's like five <laughs> minutes of quiet. Yeah. Nobody, and I don't post my whatever. I don't care. Right, it's my right. little thing. And I do crossword puzzles. And I, and as I said before, I, I, I'm a mixologist as a bartender. I do all that because it makes me enjoy being in the lane of the pets, but I can't be yep. in that lane 24 seven, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's times where you just don't want to read another article about pet stuff because you've read a million articles about pet stuff and it's fine. And I think even if you can unplug for an hour a day, whether it's getting up or a little earlier, I could tell you when I'm kayaking, I am not thinking anything about the pet industry. Yeah. I am fully focused on being in the moment and enjoying it because if you're not in the moment and enjoying it, what is the point of taking that downtime, right? You really have to focus Isn't on Isn't that. that how our dogs and cats think? Absolutely. They are in the moment. And that's so much that we can learn from our pets, right? Think about this art, and I'm sure your dogs and cats do this to you. If I'm working too much, Cody will come and sit right next to me and just stare. He won't cry. He won't paw at me. He'll just stare at me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, do you want to go outside? Do you want to go for a walk? And then I'm like, all right, I, you're right. I need to get off the screens and go. It is funny because I do think they have invisible watches. Mm -hmm. And what they do is when it gets close to like five o'clock and I'm in a backyard office, Ard's Den, and they're here with me, when I go, ah, okay, Emma runs off the couch. She thinks I'm saying I'm done. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I got to watch what I say and right. how I say it because they link in, right? They're multilinguists. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And they pay attention to your body language and everything else that's going on. So if you're stressed, and that's trickling down to your pet, you know, it's time to maybe step away. What I've said to my many of my members in the past, talking people off the ledge, yeah. listen, get out of your office, get off of your computer. Don't respond to that email. The email is going to be sitting in your inbox yep. when you come back. I right? like that. Great even advice. If it, even if it's for half an hour, 10 minutes, whatever it is, because I think we're so like, oh my God, I have to respond to this. I have to respond to this. And I'm like, if it's not a life or death, situation. Yeah, you have to respond, but you don't, I'm pretty quick to respond to everybody. But you know, you can walk away and go back like two hours later and respond to the email or the next day, right? I like that. That's great. Set advice. those boundaries for yourself and for other people. It's really important. Hey, we have Nancy Hassel on our show. She's here to keep us sane help us be successful in our businesses and recognize the power of the paw. I want you all to dash over to AmericanPetProfessionals.com. Your fingers get a little workout, but the payoff <laughs> is great. And Nancy, thank you so much for being a guest on our show today. Thank you so much, Arden, for having me. It was a lot of fun. 
<laughs> All right. Hey, I also want to do a shout out to a hardworking producer. We're talking Mark Winter, the executive producer of Pet Life Radio. We are the largest pet radio network on the planet. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. We're getting to Mars maybe someday. Um, but uh, I also, uh, at this time, want to let you all know I appreciate you tuning in. Our podcast is the longest running pet podcast on the planet. We've been on the air since 07 when no one knew what a friggin' podcast was. And uh, you want to learn more about me? Easy. It's a shorter web address. Just go to ardenmore.com. So until next time, this is your flea free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.